let me put you guys onto Shutter Encoder, which is an extremely powerful software that is really, really nice for people who stream with OBS or video editors. Really great at being able to convert any file to any file, which I'll show in a minute. You can also edit within Shutter Encoder in a lossless way where you don't have to re-ink a video, which inherently will lose some amount of quality. So if you have like an hour's worth of 4K footage, but maybe there's 20 minute chunks that are dead air, you can just throw it into Shutter Encoder and you can cut that out and then you're good. Now you can throw that into Premiere Pro and it's gonna run a lot smoother. You could also apply LUTs just straight into it where otherwise if you're editing within Premiere Pro and you have a LUT applied there, it's gonna just like tax your computer a little bit more. It's almost overwhelming the amount of things that you can do with Shutter Encoder, but once you have it downloaded, you should use that with like a ChatGBT and you can let it know like, hey, I have this tool now and it's totally free. This is what I want to achieve. How can I do it? Because it can do so many things. Let's get into it on how to download Shutter Encoder and then showcase some things that it can do. As always, links will be in the description. Downloads, downloads, downloads. This is the creator, Paul, and he is extremely active on Reddit. So while in most of my videos, I often say, hey, leave a comment, I can help you out. And I would be happy to. Paul, if you have a Reddit account, look him up on, on Reddit. You can message him and I've already done it. I was filming this video. I had a question, which I'll get to in seconds from now. I DM'd him and within five minutes, the dude replied to me personally. So extremely helpful guy. Okay, so we now have three three files here that are all shutter encoder. And this now brings me to what I messaged him about where it was actually glitching out on me. And he said, what you want to do is look for the file here that says shutter encoder open GL. So I'm going to ignore these. I'm going to right click that and then pin it to start. So now whenever I use shutter encoder, I want this one specifically. Okay. So let's open that up and we won't have any issues. Now the issue that I was having was just graphical and it, it genuinely stopped me from being able to use it. So there you go. There's tip number one. This is what it looks like out the box, but let's go ahead and drag something in. So I have a video, it's an MOV file and it ha it's the alpha with RGB only. And all that means is that this is a video PNG file. This could be super helpful to someone who's streaming with OBS. And what I want to do is take this MOV, let's drag it in there. And I want to turn it into a WebM file because WebM is going to be way less taxing and a smaller file size. So let's choose the function. That's almost always going to be the first thing that you do. What's the function? I want this to be in VP9 and output codec. And I, I'm pretty sure it's VP9. Yeah. And I only know that because I talked to ChatGPT about it and I said, Hey, is there a better way of doing this? And it said, yeah, do this VP9, make it WebM, go to the advanced features and then enable alpha channel. So these are my settings and these are all drop down boxes here that you can do yourself. So like cropping, if you film something in a four, three aspect ratio, that's great. You have more data. It's like you have more picture. You can crop in here with shutter encoder and do that in a lossless way. Anyways, we have my WebM file ready to go. Let's hit start function. Beautiful. You're going to learn to love that sound. That is a fantastic sound. Okay, great. So now let's open OBS here and do a new media source, subscribe. And now I have the WebM file here. So let's open that. Hey, check it out. Check it out. There you go. Isn't that cool? And now I got that. So one way you can use it. Another way. This might be super niche here, but maybe not. My issue that I had with Premiere Pro is that I wanted a video to be sped up. However, when I did that, the audio, even when I maintained the pitch, sounded terrible. It sounds awful. But when you and I are watching YouTube videos and we change the playback speed to 1.5, it sounds totally normal. Why does Premiere Pro like, why is Premiere Pro not able to fix that? I don't know. But what I can do is take a video. So this is so, this might be so niche and I'm kind of afraid of that, but just I'm showing you the power here of encode of shutter encoder. So here's the file that I want to be sped up. Let me check the properties details. So this is 25 frames a second. Okay, cool. So let's drag it in, choose my function. I don't want to, I don't want to re-encode this at all. Let's just keep it H264, which is standard. And to speed it up, I'm going to go back to the advanced features conform by speed. And then instead of 25, let's do like, let's do 48 and then start function. Okay. And then I should add that I will, I have this box checked 
add a prefix so that I can easily know which one is from Shutter Encoder or which one isn't. You could also delete this source file, add a suffix, or create a subfolder. Let's check this out. Ignore the way you wanted the fight to finish, of course. It's a frustration accidental. I hope you were just saying to me then, had it so gone wrong, that's what I was told. Like 20 more seconds, they said it would be considered a gone to score cartooning. And that's uh, like normal was. audio. I, guys, I, I don't know if anyone watching this can appreciate this, but like actually doing this in a video editing software has been impossible for me. And uh, I felt, I don't know, I did the fight and uh, I was And now I have it just like that. Okay. Okay. The last thing that I'll showcase here is just a simple conversion where if you're recording in OBS, you might want your files to be MKV because if at any point your OBS crashes, your recording files, the benefit of MKV is that you won't lose anything. If your OBS crashes, you'll have everything saved up until that crash. But if you're recording an MP4, you'll lose everything. So that's a huge downside, right? But if you do have MKV files, they will not edit well at all. You will always need to convert them. And now this is an extremely easy way of doing that. So I have an MKV file here, throw it in, choose function. I already have it, but you know, you would want to go to H264 MP4. And yeah, so the source is MKV, start function. This, I think what I'm showcasing right now might be one of the number one features this is it's very minimal it's very light it's not a big deal but just having this ready to go on your computer to convert something lossless this is very nice extremely convenient okay i didn't know this was real so i opened this flashlight and inside i found this rechargeable double battery what is rechargeable beautiful we got it we got an mp4 ready to just be thrown into whatever video editing software you have and it will be perfectly compatible with so this is Shutter Encoder. I'm sure that there will be plenty more videos to come with this. I think the color grading could be super nice if you just want to, if you record with like a mirrorless camera or something that you want to just right off the bat add a LUT to it and correct your color grade. Dude, this is, this is so nice to have it here as opposed to in a video editing software where you're working with 4K footage, you add a LUT on top of that. It's gonna slow down your computer. There's so many cool things you can do here. Add a watermark, you can edit subtitles. Genuinely, Shutter Encoder, is fantastic. If there's anyone watching this video, let me do this again, check that out, who does use Shutter Encoder, leave a comment, let me know what you've done it for. Do you have any tips? All right, I'll leave it there. Future videos on Shutter Encoder are coming. This thing is amazing.